And hello everyone, welcome to my simple to-do list app tutorial. This is written in Python 3 and I'm using the Genie Editor. So let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. So I've got a TK Enter window here and I've also I've already saved some tasks. So I'm going to go ahead and load. So I'm able to load some tasks up. I'm able to delete some tasks. I'm able to add a task. Okay, and it tells me warning, you must enter a task. So I enter a task here. I can say, let's see, get some sleep. So I'm tired. <laughs> and then uh, so I just click add task and that goes up into my list. I can save those tasks. And then if I go ahead and delete or if I come back to the program later, I can load the tasks up again. Okay, so it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. There is a scroll bar here that if I had you know, many tasks going past the limit, I would be able to scroll up and down. I'll show you that in the video. So let's get started. Just so you know, um, this is going to take about 50 to 60 lines of code. So it's not too, too complex, but there's a couple little gotchas. So let's go ahead and uh, write our first line. As I said before, we're going to be using the TK Inter module, which we're going to be using to make the windows and the widgets and things. We're also going to be using, uh, from the TK Inter module, the TK Inter message box. I'm pretty sure it's a class. And yeah, that's that. So if you haven't seen any of my other TK Inter tutorials, you might want to start with those, particularly maybe the BMI calculator is a bit simpler to, to follow. This one's a bit more complex, but uh, I'll walk you through it step by step. So first thing I need to do is to create a window where I'm going to actually put all these things to. So I want to say root, oops, not rot, root equals TK Inter dot TK and parentheses. Note the capitalization is very important. And I'm going to give my program a title. And I'm going to call this you know, to do oops to do list by at Tokyo EdTech. And you can follow me on Twitter. I do have an Instagram. And but the best place to, to contact me is here on YouTube. So you can just you know subscribe or leave a message in the comments below and I will get back to you if you need some help. So that will create the window. Now if I run this. Okay, you can see basically nothing happened, which is what I expected. Because what happens is once it gets to the end, program stops. So what we need to do is the last line of our program needs to be not to root <laughs> dot main loop. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run that again. And now you can see I've got a window. And what we're going to do is we're going to start putting all of our widgets into that window. So usually when I do this type of program, I will start with the GUI because I think that's kind of gives us a little, you know, basis to put things and, and kind of helps us to understand what we want to do. Now you've already seen what the program is going to look like. Um, I think, I think I closed it, but it looks something like this. So we're going to have a, a list box widget. We're going to have a scroll bar. These are actually inside of a frame and I'll show you why in a second. We have an entry widget where we can actually enter information. And then we have one, two, three, four buttons that will control what our program does. And each button is actually connected to a function, as you'll see in a little bit. Okay, so let me go ahead and create the GUI. So create GUI. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list box. And I'm going to call it tasks because that's what I'm, I'm saving here. And this is going to be TK enter dot list box. And I have to say where it's going to go. So I'm going to put that into the root window. Now I'm going to change this in a little bit, but for now it's root window. And I need to give it a height. For now, I'm just going to give it a really short height. I'm going to keep it small. I'm going to say height equals, let's just do three. Um, and I'm going to give it a width. And this is in characters. So how many characters I want it to hold. I'm going to make that 50. And if you've seen my other TK Enter tutorials or GUI tutorials, you know the next thing we need to do is to pack it. Now I don't have to do it in this order. I could create all the widgets, then pack or, or use the grid. But I'm just going to do it here. It makes things easier. List box uh, task dot pack. Okay. Now, notice the names that I'm using. So I, I very much emphasize to my students that if you name things properly, it will make you your life easier. So I'm creating a list box, so I call it list box. 
The list box contains a bunch of uh, tasks. So I'm actually gonna call it list box tasks. Is that, oops, what happened there? Control Z, Control Z. Okay, list box tasks. And I'm gonna call it list box tasks. And if you haven't really programmed this type of stuff before, uh, this is something I always recommend to my students and they always ignore me and they always pay the price. Test it. Okay, let's go ahead and test it. And you can see now this has changed and now I can't do anything with it, but there is a list box widget there. And it's, it is 50 characters wide um, based on this. And it is three rows, uh, sorry, it's 50 characters wide and three rows high. Okay. So the next thing I wanna add is my scroll bar. Well, do we, yeah, let's do the scroll bar, I guess. We could do that. Um, actually, I'll tell you, we'll come back to the scroll bar in a little bit because that, that's a bit more complex. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a an entry task widget because that's where we're gonna put the information. And I'm gonna call that tkinter.entry. It also goes into the root. Its width is also 50. And same thing, I'm gonna go entry task dot pack. And I didn't put tasks because we only enter one task at a time. So all of my variable names make sense, at least I think they do. Okay, I'm gonna test it. So here now I can actually start typing some stuff in there. And if you recall, we had four buttons. Okay, the first one was button add task, because that's what it does. TK enter dot button. It's also going to go into the root. It's going to say text equals add task. Uh, the width of this one is going to be 48. I found that number works really well. And I need to give it a command. So this, this is what the function is called when I run it. Now it should come as no surprise. I want it to be logical. So this is button add task. So I'm going to name my function also add task. Now, if you're used to functions, notice how there's no parentheses here. This is a kind of a limitation of TK enter. If we wanted to pass parameters, we'd have to use something called a Lambda. We don't need to do that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and define add task. And for now, I'm just gonna put pass. Okay, so that's just a placeholder so that it follows the indentation pattern we require in Python. And I'm gonna go ahead and pack this as well. And if you're following along, you should know that we're going to test it. Okay, so I've got my list box. I've got this. I've got add task. Okay. So I guess at this point, we got to make a decision. Do we want to go ahead and make all the rest of the buttons or do we want to go ahead and try to do some of the functionality? If you, know, if you haven't done this stuff before, if you're not sure what you're doing, it's probably better to kind of get the, the functionality working so you can see how all the different parts fit together a little bit. So let's go ahead and do add task. And let's see here. We do have quite a few things to go over here. So add task. So basically what I'm gonna put here is I'm gonna put a task and let's say I should call my mom. Um, and what I want to happen is when I click add task, it will appear here on my list. So the first thing I have to do is get the task. Again, keep in mind, look at how I'm naming my variables. I didn't call it T, I didn't call it TK, I didn't call it TSK. I called it task because it represents a task. If you do this, it will keep your code much, much easier. Now, I need to get the task from entry task. Makes sense. And there is a method called get, and that will give me the text of what I've entered. And what I want to do is put that into the list box. And the way to do that is list box tasks dot insert. And the thing is we have to tell it where to insert it. So do we want to insert it at the beginning? Do we want to insert it at the end? In this case, we want it inserted at the end. So to do that, we use tkinter.end. Note the capitalization. And what we're inserting is the actual task. 
stop and test it. Again, beginners, will they'll just type in all the code that I give them and they don't understand how anything works. So here we go, let's run this. So what I should be able to do now is enter my tasks. If I click add task, it should appear up here. So add task, okay, let's do it again. Add task, add task, add task, add task. Now you notice I can't scroll yet and that was intentional. So a couple things here. Notice how what happens is I add the task and that's it. Okay, if I think about that, I'd probably only want to add a task once. So what I should do is clear the entry widget. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to say entry task dot, and I'm going to be deleting from the zero with element. That's the first element, but it's zero. That's the way computers count all the way to the end. Okay. I'm going to test it. So I'm going to type here call mom and I'm going to add the task. Now you can see how it, it worked and now this is clear. So I'm going to click add task again and I'm going to try call mom again. So you can see how it allowed me to add an empty task. Wait, I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to use a little if statement. So if the task is not equal to empty, like nothing, there's no space here, do this. Now, if it is empty, I want to warn the user. So TK enter message box, which we imported up above. Show warning. And the title, oops, and the title is going to be warning. Yeah, don't have to make it so dramatic, but you can. And the message is going to equal, you must enter a task. So you can see how we're building this up piece by piece. We're thinking about how we want our functionality to work. I'm gonna put else here, sorry. So if it's not empty, go ahead and put the information in, delete it from the entry. Otherwise, if it's empty, we wanna print a warning. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that and test it. So same thing, I'm gonna type call mom, hit add task. Now I'm gonna hit add task without typing anything. I've got a little warning, it says you must enter a task. So I go ahead and type, uh, say buy a new guitar, wouldn't that be nice? And notice now there's no space. So I'm not filling in empty things. So we have the basic add functionality working already. Look how, look how few lines this takes. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six lines to do all that functionality. This, this is the power of Python. This is the power of the TK Inter module as well. So I think what I want to do at this point is do the scroll bar uh, because the scroll bar is, is a bit complicated. Now, I didn't know how to do this uh, a, few, I don't know, a couple hours ago. I just went and did some Googling and I found some information on how to do it. So let's do it. To get, to get that to work, we need something called a scroll bar. So in a lot of GUI libraries, the scroll bar will come as part of the widget already. But the TK Inter module works just a little bit differently. And you need to add the scroll bar and connect the scroll bar with the widget. It's not hard to do, but you just need to do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the scroll bar. And it will probably come as no surprise. I'm going to call it tasks. So scroll bar tasks equals tk enter dot scroll bar. It is also in the root window. And it that's it. Actually, for scroll bar, that's all you need. You don't need anything else. It's going to go in the window. And I'm going to go ahead and pack it. So scroll bar tasks dot pack. So let me go ahead and run that, see what we got here. Oh, scroll bar is not correct, scroll bar. Um, okay, let's go ahead, take that out, and um, let's try that again. <laughs> okay, so now you can see I've got a little scroll bar here. Now obviously it's not where we want it to be. We want it to be over here. Okay. So there is a an option with the pack geometry manager to put things on the side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say side, 
equals tk enter dot right because I want it to go on to the right side and fill equals tk enter dot y and to be honest I'm not 100% sure what that does I'm guessing it means it fills the space but you can play around with that and figure it out I just know this works so let's try it okay so now you can see the scroll bar is on the right okay but it's it's kind of in the wrong spot okay so I, I don't want that obviously so one thing I can try and I don't, I don't know if it's gonna work I just thought of it right now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just see if the order makes a difference and okay the order did not make a difference okay so that's oh oh that was interesting so the order so the scroll bar is way over here now so it does make a little bit of a difference but the problem is we only want the scroll bar to be here and not through the whole thing okay so let me uh, go ahead and close that And what I can do here is I can put side equals tk enter dot left. Kind of makes sense. If there's a right, there's probably a left. So I'm going to go ahead and try that and see what happens. Okay, so it's just, it's kind of getting worse, actually. Uh, that's not what we wanted. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a little bit of a frame. And the frame's going to hold just the list box tasks and the scroll bar tasks. So I'm going to go ahead and create that first. And again, it'll come as no surprise. I'm going to call this frame tasks. And you don't have to do it this way, but if you have a long program especially, you'll find it's really helpful if you have things named properly. And this is going to be a frame, and it's going to go into the root. And then I'm going to say frame tasks.pack. Now let's run that and see what happens. Okay. Now you can see how there's been no change, and this is this is what's expected. So the difference is, because I have a frame, I don't want my list box to go into the root anymore. I want it to go into my frame tasks. And same thing with my scroll bar. I don't want it to go into the root directly. I want it to go into the frame I call tasks. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And there we go. We basically got what we wanted. So we've got the scroll bar here, and we've got the widgets where we want them. So let me go ahead and add some items here. So A, add task, B, C, D, E, F. So I've added all these items, but I can't, I can scroll with my mouse, which is, which is convenient, but I want to go ahead and use a scroll bar. Now the scroll bar is just sitting there doing nothing. So what I got to do, is use the following code. And this is just something I Googled, I found out how to do it. I don't quite know how all of it works, but with a little bit of experimentation, I did get it to work, so I'm happy. So I'm gonna say scroll bar tasks dot config, so I'm configure, configuring it. I'm gonna say the Y scroll command, so that's when we scroll Y, which is up and down, equals scroll bar task.set. Okay. So when I scroll on my scroll bar on the, in the y direction, it's scroll bar task set. So it's going to call the scroll bar task set method. So then on the scroll bar tasks, task, I need to do a little config as well. It's going to say command equals list box tasks oops I made a mistake there this should be list box tasks dot config sorry about that list box tasks dot config and this should be scroll bar tasks dot config sorry about that equals list box tasks dot y view so I assume this is the view of in the y coordinates which would be up and down Okay, so that's the code. So it's listbox task.config, y scroll command equals scroll bar task.set, scroll bar task.config, command equals listbox task.y view. Let's go ahead and test it. And notice how, see how that got a little bit bigger there, which is interesting. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit, just add, add some things. B, C, D. Okay, I'm going to enter a task, E. Uh, now again, I can scroll here. Notice how the scroll bar is scrolling now. Okay, but I can also move it here. I can also click the little arrows. So now that is how we get a working scroll bar, which is pretty darn cool. Okay, so at this point, I might want to just go ahead and make this a little taller. Let's say you can decide what size you want it, but I'll say, let's just say we want it to be 10 tasks. Uh, if you got more than 10 tasks, you probably got a very busy life. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's the basic functionality. At this point, we have a working uh, to-do list. Now, it doesn't do a lot, but you know, we, we want to probably add a few other commands. So we got to add a few more buttons. So what I could do is I could just copy these. So we've got three buttons to add. So we've got button add task. We've got button delete task. So delete task. And so we've got to change it in four places. Oops, delete task, and call this delete task. And then we got a button that is, I think this one is load tasks from disk. So we're going to be saving it. Load tasks. And I'm going to make a method called load tasks. And again, just by keeping everything consistent, you will definitely cut down on potential sources of errors. And we're, ooh, it should be tasks. We're not loading one task. We're, we're lo saving, we're loading many tasks. So yeah, and then we have save tasks. I guess technically it could be one task, but it's probably unlikely. Um, save tasks and... Now if I run this, I'm gonna get an error. And it says delete task is not defined. Okay, because we made a command, but there's no method there. So we gotta go up to here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make you know places for that. So I'm gonna say delete task. And just for now, pass. Say define load tasks. Pass. And define save tasks and pass. So again, I'm going to run it, check it. Okay, so I got an error there in line 22 because I forgot to put the colon. Probably you guys caught that. And okay, so I got my things. Of course, they don't do anything yet because of we haven't coded them, but that's still working and I'm going to assume the scroll bar is still working. Next up, let's see here. So let's go ahead and figure out how to delete a task. And let's see here. Just kind of scroll through. I took some pictures of the code so I didn't forget how to do it. And okay, delete tasks. So, deleting a task. So first we got to figure out what task we want to delete. And to do this, we need the index of the task that we have chosen. So I'm going to say task index equals list box tasks dot cur selection parentheses okay cur selection is the selection of the of the current task that has been selected so this is just the command that you got to use okay um oh and cur selection for some reason it's got to be zero uh index zero i'm not quite sure why oh i know why because what happens is you can actually select multiple items and but what we want is just one item so that's why so task index and then what we'll do is list box tasks dot delete task index that's it very very simple so let me go ahead and run that so i'm gonna go oops i didn't want to do that so i'm gonna go ahead and add a task add a few tasks Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and, and try and delete. I'm going to select B and delete it. Easy peasy. Now watch what happens. I haven't selected a task. So I'm going to go ahead and click delete and see what happens. Okay, so you can see here, I've got an error. 
Okay, so we have to deal with this error. So what I would do, and this is something called a try accept block, okay, is the following. Right, let me close that so I don't forget. And so I'm going to go ahead and put here try. I'm going to index this, or indent, excuse me, accept, and I'm going to print a warning. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. I know I've already, I've already done it once. And in this case, you must select the task. So the try accept block, what it does is it tries this. If there's an error, it does this. So it'll try it. And if you get an error, it does the other thing. So this is a good way to stop your program from failing when there's an error. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a task or two. Okay. Notice nothing is selected. I'm going to click delete. It says you must select a task. So now it prevents me from trying to delete without selecting. And notice there's no error, so my program keeps running. Okay, so we're making some really good progress here. Again, we, we now have a working program. Okay. Um, la the last thing we want to do is saving and loading. Now, we can't load anything until we save. So we're going to do the save tasks first. And to do saving, we're going to use something called the pickle module. And the pickle module is very, very convenient. So we have to import pickle. Okay. I do have a video about this, actually, if you want to see it in more detail. But it's so simple. It's really a couple lines of code. Uh, it's just amazing what you can do with this. So to save the tasks, the first thing I need to do is I need to get the tasks. Notice, again, my variable name is tasks. It's not T. It's not things. It's not... Uh, items, it's, it's task. It's very, very clear what I'm referring to here. So to do that, I do list box task, oops, list box tasks. That's the name of the list box. Um, there should be an underscore here. I think it's just not showing. And I don't know why it does that. I think it has something to do with the font. List box tasks dot, uh, where's that at? Get, and I want to get from zero to list box tasks dot size in parentheses. Don't don't screw up the parentheses. We got a set here for the whole get method. We got a set here for the size method. So that will give us the tasks that are in the list box as a list. So tasks is a list. So if I said print tasks, it will do this. This is a good way of testing the code, just kind of so you understand what's going on. This is what I did earlier when I was trying to figure this out. So I click on Save Tasks. You can see down here it's created a, actually a tuple. It's created a tuple, and we're going to save that tuple to disk. Okay. And to save it's very, very simple with the pickle module. We're going to go ahead and use the pickle module, and we're going to use a command called dump. And we have to dump it into a file, or we have to dump the, what, what do we want to dump? In this case, we want to dunk, dump tasks. And we're going to put it into a file. So I'm going to use the open command. And I'm going to make a file called task.dat. DAT means data. It doesn't have to be DAT. It could be something else, but this makes sense. I'm saving tasks. I'm calling it tasks. It's a data file. I call it .dat. But you can call it what you want. And then I need to put WB. This means write binary. That's a bit hard to explain, but just, just memorize that. So I am writing to the file called task.dat the information in the variable tasks. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. And again, so A, B, C. And I'm going to save it. Now, we don't know necessarily if it worked or not, okay? Because there's no indication that it worked. But what I could do is, oops, wrong one. I'm gonna go to my desktop. I'm gonna find the folder. Okay, so if I go into the folder where my to-do list file is, you'll see a file called task.dat. 
So that's a good sign that what, whatever we did worked correctly. Now, until we load it, we won't know if we did it right, but that's, that's the next step, okay? So now that we've saved it, we can go ahead and try to load tasks. So this is amazing. the amazing thing about the pickle module. It's one line. So tasks equal pickle, pickle.load, ah, load. And this time it's open first. It's gotta be the same name, which is what we called it. And now we're not writing binary, we're reading binary. That's it. So now what we have to do is get that information into the list box. So for task in tasks, so for each task that we just loaded, list box tasks dot insert at the end the task. That's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this. And do we get a pop-up? There we go. Oh, I think I didn't close this one. Okay, there's the new one. Um, that's something you'll see sometimes. I know my students have this problem is because they didn't close the previous one, it's still running. So you got to close the previous one until the new one will work. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit load tasks. And there it is. So it pulled it out of that file for us. But there is one problem. If I hit load tasks again, it doubles, triples, it keeps adding them. Okay, so we don't want that. So we need a little bit of code to fix that. So basically what I'm going to do is once I've loaded this, I'm going to go ahead and clear the list box. So I'm going to say list box tasks dot delete zero to TK enter end. So that will delete everything in the list box. Oh, that shouldn't go. That's, that's in the wrong spot. Sorry. That's going to go up here. Once I've loaded the tasks, and before I add them, I'm going to go ahead and delete. So let's test it. So load tasks. Okay, so I'm clicking it and nothing's happening. Okay, now I can still add tasks. I can still delete tasks. And I can save tasks. So let's go ahead and delete and delete. And I'm going to load. And so everything's working exactly as expected. So I'm very happy with this. Um, now the only thing I'll show you, there's one more thing I should, we should probably fix. I'm going to go back to this folder and where I had all that. And I'm going to get rid of this file. I'm going to uh, just move to the rubbish bin. I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to run it again. And I'm going to try and load tasks and see what happens. Okay. So you can see I got an error down here. It says file not found error. No such file or directory task.dat. So since the file does not exist, I can't load it. And it gives me an error, and this, then this messes up the program. Okay, so we're gonna have to deal with that. And if you're paying attention earlier, you'll probably figure out, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do a try accept block again. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit try. I'm gonna indent this whole thing. And in, uh, oops, and in my accept, I'm gonna go ahead and just give a warning. So tab accept. And the same thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. Paste that in there. And the warning is just gonna be something like uh, you know, no data file present. How about this? Cannot find uh, tasks.dat. That's, that's pretty useful. Let's go ahead and run it and test it. So I'm gonna load tasks. Cannot find task.dat. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a few tasks. So call mom. I'm gonna say upload video. Video. Uh, create, uh, create thumbnail. And add task. So I'm gonna go ahead and save those tasks. I'm gonna go ahead and delete a few. Delete them all, I guess. And check and make sure that my load is working. And there you go. That is a complete uh, to-do list app complete with scroll bars, saving, loading, and yeah, pretty much everything you need. So again, so you can see here we're down to 72 lines of code. You know, of course, there's some spaces, there's some comments, and uh, there's some you know, comments up here. But yeah, it's only, what, about 60 lines of code. So if you like what you saw, please subscribe. Uh, I do make uh, quite a bit of content. I do have some links down below that you can either 
check out Patreon. You can click on Amazon links to support the channel. I do appreciate it. Or you can, uh, soon I'll be adding uh, channel subscriptions. Or is it subscriptions? Memberships. Not sure what they call it, but you get the idea. Uh, anyway, I hope, I hope that helped. If you have any questions, comment below. And uh, keep on coding. Take care.